Let's get started. I'd like to invite Brooke and Eric up to stage to demonstrate how Creative Cloud combined with Adobe Stock make bringing your creative vision to life that much simpler. You guys take it away. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Wow, it is so incredible to be here in front of so many talented people. I'm a designer at Adobe, and when I'm not doing that, I'm typically being asked to design for friends and family. I'm sure you all know what I mean. <laughs> so I have a few friends who are in a band called Lost Lakes, and they've asked me and Eric to collaborate on a poster for a concert they've got coming up this weekend, of course. So let's get started. So this is Photoshop, and this is the new document screen that we've designed to be more visual and easier to use. Now, as always, I can manually enter the custom dimensions for the project that I want to create. But like Brian said, we've really focused on improving the experience for the things that you do over and over again. So I've got some recent sizes here. I've got some save sizes that I go to all the time. And then I've got some popular presets for categories like web and mobile and, of course, print. Now, I could start with this tabloid size, but as you all know, we're running short on time. So I'm going to check out these templates. Templates are just one of the great new features from Adobe Stock that help make Photoshop easier to use. I'm looking for something simple, and this looks like it could work for me. Let's go for it. So templates are really helpful for people who are just learning the tool, but they're also incredible for someone like me who just wants to get going without a blank canvas. The template is connected to my Creative Cloud account, which means I have access to it everywhere I have Photoshop. It's going to create a new document each time I open the template, so I never have to worry about overwriting it. And hopefully it's ready. Looks like it's good. Let's open it up. Whoops. Let's try something different here. <laughs> Looks like someone decided to sneak in a little file for me. All right, here we go. So this is the template. And uh, I could, so I've already started collecting some assets that I know I'm going to need into a Creative Cloud library. Now, I'm sure some of you already use Creative Cloud libraries, but for those of you who don't, you're missing out. They're an amazing way to manage things like colors, logos, and assets that I know I'm going to need for a project. But where they really shine is when I'm working on a team, like I'm doing today with Eric, and we can add each other as collaborators to the library, so we each have access to all of the assets across all of our devices. So I'm going to pull in the logo that we created in Illustrator, Lost Lakes logo here. Great. And let me just show you how simple it is to change things like character styles that I've already got in my library. It's as simple as selecting the text and then selecting the character style. Oops. So the title of our concert is Rock the Woods. Let's change that there. A thing where I can't type when there's 10,000 people watching me. <laughs> and it's happening in the gorgeous Santa Cruz Mountains. Great. So I'm going to get rid of this uh, stroke here, because it's not really doing a whole lot for me. And then I just want to pull in the date graphic that we already have in our library that we created in Illustrator. Awesome. So I've got the basics, but it really isn't anything special. Um, so I want to pull in a background image to start tying things together. And to find that image, I'm going to check out Adobe Stock. Now, Adobe Stock is a collection of over 60 million images, illustrations, templates, and videos that are integrated into all my creative tools. I'm going to do a quick search for Forest, because that's where things are happening. And you can see that I've got a ton of really gorgeous results. But I've actually already got an image in mind. Um, it's a friend, uh, an image that I stole from my friend's Instagram account. And what I really like about it is the trees in the foreground and the mountains in the background. And I like the sunset. But there's a couple problems. The sky is pretty blown out, and I stole it off of Instagram. Mm -hmm. But I <laughs> You've all done it. Don't judge me. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to show you a brand new feature that just launched on Adobe Stock today that allows me to drag the image into my browser. And what's happening is Adobe Stock is analyzing that image, and it's going to find images that are visually similar to that one. And pretty similar, right?
So I really like this one. Let's check out a preview. Now, I could download this to my desktop and pull it into Photoshop. Because Adobe Stock is integrated into Photoshop, I can save a preview directly to the Creative Cloud library that Eric and I are already working on. So it allows me to play with the watermark image and decide whether or not I want to use it before I decide to license it. You can see it's appearing in my library here. So I'm just going to pull it onto the poster. Just got to make it a little bit bigger. Great. Let's reduce the opacity of this to let the image shine through just a little bit. Yeah, it's not really doing a whole lot for me, actually. The sky's still super blown out, and I'm not a fan of those flowers in the foreground. In fact, I wanted a few mountains. Now, I could go back out to the website and try to figure out what keywords I would need to search for to find images that are visually similar. But I'm going to give you guys a sneak preview of a really awesome new feature coming to Photoshop called Visual Canvas Search. Visual Canvas Search allows me to search directly from my canvas. In fact, I can search from a selection of my canvas. But what makes this feature so incredibly powerful, and what you guys already know and what I already know is, this is Photoshop. I can put whatever I want on my canvas. So I've got some mountains that I had in my library. And I can just quickly composite those onto the background, make a selection of just the portion of that image so I don't get that blown out. And I can click Find Similar. And directly within Photoshop, I can find Adobe stock images that are visually similar. <laughs> and these are really fantastic results. In fact, I like this one a lot. So I'm just going to save a preview to the Creative Cloud library. And we can get rid of this one. Not doing it for me. All right, let's pull this one onto the background. Cool. I'm going to make a few adjustments to the contrast of it, just to brighten it up just a touch. Great. And I need to pull in this, uh, the lighter date graphic. Well, it's already in my library, so it's super simple to do. Cool. Um, I think this is pretty awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and license this. And I can do that directly within Photoshop. Now, with other services, I would have to go back out to the website. I would have to try to find the image that I downloaded. I would have to go through a really cumbersome purchasing process. But, and then I would have to pull it into Photoshop, try to remember every single one of those edits I made. But I can do this directly within Photoshop. And a high resolution version of that image is appearing on my canvas with every single one of those edits I made. It's so easy, and it's fantastic. And in case you missed it, the watermark is gone, and I have a stunning background image. So this looks pretty good, but I still feel like it's missing something. Well, I'm running out of time, and Brian's probably going to come back up here and kick me off stage if I don't hand it over. So Eric, he's an amazing designer, and I want you to take it away, no pressure. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think this looks really great. You know, you know the, the one element that's not working for me is, is that circle. I feel like we could have a little bit of a different shape that would work with the background better. So I'm going to take that image out of the shared Creative Cloud library and just do some edits, um, edits to it. And so you know, these days when I'm doing you know, drawing and compositing work, I'm doing almost all of it over on my iPad Pro. Uh, between the Apple Pencil, a great set of applications, um, it just, it's really been my go-to device for all of this kind of work. And so um, to start out on my iPad Pro, I'm going to go into Adobe Photoshop Mix. And Photoshop Mix is uh, the core uh, masking and compositing engine from Photoshop running on iOS and Android devices. And for those of you who have used Mix, you'll notice we have a completely new organizer. So whether you have a few photos or a few hundred photos, we make it really easy to organize and find your work. Um, across the bottom, we're introducing learning and discovery content from Behance at the top level of the application, so you can learn um, how Mix works and see great content that other people have created. So I'm going to go ahead and create um, a new document, and I'm going to grab some assets from this uh, shared library that, uh, that Brooke and I have been using, um, band assets. And I think this logo that we created in Illustrator looks pretty good. Um, and then these uh, two different images from Adobe Stock, I'm going to go ahead and open those up. So pulling an asset from a few different places, I'm going to scale these up just to make sure they look the way I need them to. And um, reorder a few of my layers, so I want that on top. 
and I want this second layer um, in between the two. So this is a good start. I'm starting to you know, mix these images together. Uh, but what I actually want to do is create a blending mode on this top layer. So we've got a ton of really great blending modes in here. I can set this to screen and let the image start to show through that logo, get rid of that black background. Um, I also want to use that shape, that triangular shape, as a mask of the layer below it. So if I drag that on top of the image below, Mix makes it really easy. I've got this copy mask on layer option, and it's just going to cut out the layer below it using that mask. And then um, you know, now that I see these two images on top of each other, I think I want to lighten up the background image. So I'm going to go into my adjustments and exposure and just uh, amp that up a little bit. So I'm pretty happy with these three layers, but I want to do some painting and drawing work. And for that, I'm actually going to go into a different application. And so you guys saw that uh, quick spinner happening. There's something pretty interesting going on in the background here. So our mobile apps have always synced everything you've done to Creative Cloud since day one. Um, your work is backed up. It appears on multiple devices. And if you're working with someone like Brooke and I are working with, uh, together today, all of your stuff is already in the cloud. It makes it really easy to collaborate. But something we're excited to give you a sneak preview of today is documents in the cloud. So if I leave Photoshop Mix and go into Sketch, which is our natural media painting and drawing application, you'll notice I have all the same files. And that file I was working on just shows up. I can go ahead and open this up, and I see all the layers that were created inside of Mix. Now, I don't have to know if this is an Illustrator file or a Photoshop file. Um, the cloud just makes that really simple, and I can just get working across multiple applications. So from here, I'm going to add a sketch layer in between my Mix layers. So I'm combining layers from different applications into one place. And I want to start painting into it. So I'm going to go ahead and select um, a brush. And so Sketch has always had the best built-in brushes out there. And with Adobe Capture, you can create brushes out of anything your camera can take a photo of. But something we're really excited to announce today is um, Sketch is now the first mobile application that allows you to use Photoshop brushes. So if you have you know, all of your brushes you've used forever in Photoshop to draw on the desktop, you can use all those same marks here on the mobile device. And so yeah, great. Some illustrators out there. It's a big deal for people drawing on the iPad. And so this is actually um, a set of brushes uh, made by Kyle Webster. He's a really well-known illustrator and brush maker. And these are regular Photoshop brushes um, running on the iPad. So I'm going to select this rake brush. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I want to select a color from this shared library. So Brooke and I are always using the same color palette um, and reduce the flow. And I'm just going to start painting um, some rough texture in the background. Uh, I think I went a little bit crazy. So I'm going to go into my blend modes and select clear. We have all the same brush blending modes that you have in Photoshop on the desktop. So a ton of um, creative control here. I can just lighten that up a little bit. Um, and then from there, I'm going to change the blending mode, same blending modes in, in Mix and in Sketch. I'm going to change this, I think, to multiply just to get that background in there. So it's getting close. There's one more little thing I want to do. So I have this image layer um, that came in from Mix, and I actually want to paint into that layer. So within Sketch, I can actually convert this into a Sketch layer. So it's almost like I've drawn every one of these pixels within Sketch. And if I turn on Lock Transparency, I can paint inside of that mask that I created in another application. So I'm going to go ahead and select, um, I think, this oil brush. It's got a really nice uh, canvas texture in the background. I really like it. Uh, I'm going to grab a little bit lighter color, make it bigger, opacity down. I'm just going to paint uh, a little bit sort of inside of here. Let me change that. Lock transparency, undo. There we go. So now I'm just painting inside of that shape. Great. So I think this looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close out of this project. And again, if I go back into Mix, you'll notice my edits just show up automatically. Everything is synced. If I open this file up, I'll see all the edits I made across two applications showing up. So I can really use you know, Sketch for painting and drawing, Mix for masking and compositing, every app for what it's best at, all on the same file. And so um, I'm really happy with this. I've got all of my layers here. I'm going to go ahead and send this to a Creative Cloud library. And so what this is going to do, it's going to take all of the layers from two of these applications, mix them together, create a Photoshop file, and it's going to put it inside of the shared library so Brooke can use it as a background. Uh, you know, Brooke, what do you think? Eric, I think this looks really awesome. I absolutely love what you did with the vector mountains and the image compositing. And I think it's going to be perfect for the background image of the poster. Um, and I also love what you did with Kyle's Photoshop brushes. That's amazing. Cool. Let's get rid of this. 
Now, this looks pretty good, but I still feel like it's maybe missing something. Well, when Kyle created the Photoshop brush pack for us, he actually sent us a bonus illustration of some elk. And I had a feeling that it might work out on this poster. So <laughs> let's drag those down here. They're pretty awesome, right? <laughs> cool. I actually really love this, and I think Lost Lakes is going to love it too. Now, I just want to point out, this is pretty cool. We just had Eric and I collaborating, plus Kyle's elk, and <laughs> we created a pretty awesome poster within a span of just a few minutes using multiple devices, mobile and desktop. And that is the power of Creative Cloud tied together through libraries. Thank you. Gotta love those elk. So how about that find similar command? That's, that's powerful. You know, uh, Shanta and I were talking about, I was feeling a little bit of pressure. He said, don't worry, Brian, the keynote's gonna go great. And I said, well, I'm a little worried. He said, well, look, if it doesn't go well, then Abe chimed in and said, I know Shanta is sensei, we can just use the find similar command on Brian, right? So, okay. <laughs> That was my bad joke of the day. All right. As Eric, as Eric mentioned, you can use Photoshop brushes directly in Adobe Scratch. And um, we, we've, we've decided to help you get started with that by teaming up with Kyle Webster, who's built some phenomenal brushes to provide a set of Kyle's most useful Photoshop brushes. So we're going to make those available to you uh, today. The, the poster that Eric and Brooke created is a great example of how we brought together Adobe Stock, some of the Sensei technology, along with the collaboration enabled by Creative Cloud to help you execute on your creative vision faster than ever before. And today, with Adobe Stock, we're excited to announce that we're expanding Adobe Stock with the addition of editorial content. So through a partnership with Reuters, the largest independent news agency and source of editorial images, we're going to bring that to Adobe Stock. So Reuters obviously has a huge history here, but there's an archive of over 13 million photographs of images across all major news, sports, entertainment, and lifestyle events that grows every day. So we're, this will expand the Adobe Stock Library by near, nearly 18 million high-quality images and videos, and they're adding nearly 4,000 every day. So this is going to be a huge asset uh, for you in Creative Cloud. The entire Reuters collection will be available in Adobe Stock within the coming few months, and we'll announce the availability to all of you. So proud to team up with Reuters.